Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with the Spain News Update. And some of Spain's biggest food and beverage companies have said that their businesses are in danger if the transport workers strike doesn't end soon. But more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel by buying merchandise. And a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your ongoing support. Now, let's get into the news. And as I said, some of Spain's biggest food and beverage companies have sent a strong message to the government. And as we can see here, they warn that their businesses will be in danger if there is no agreement with Hauliers Now. Numerous food companies and cooperatives have had to interrupt their manufacturing processes and have been forced to temporarily close their plants due to the lack of supply, such as Calvo, Azucarera, Cuetera, Decoup, Jaén Coop, Agro Sevilla, or feed factories, and others such as Denone, Estrella de Galicia, or Hanican Cruz Campo, have announced this Tuesday that they will have to do so soon if the strike persists. In the case of the Denone company, they have warned that it will be forced to interrupt its activity in its four dairy product plants in Spain and in the three natural mineral water plants as a force majeure due to the transport workers' strike if an immediate agreement is not reached to put an end to the stoppages. So the food and beverage industry in this country saying that enough is enough and demanding that the transport workers strike end ASAP. And a lot of companies, like the ones we saw in the article, threatening to shut down their operations. Now, the future leader of the main opposition party here in Spain, the Partido Popular, Alberto Núñez Feijó, spoke yesterday, and he asked the government for measures to guarantee supply and for the army to intervene if necessary. The president of the Junta de Galicia, Alberto Núñez Feijó, has asked the central government for a contingency plan to resolve the escalation of prices and guarantee the supply of basic products in the face of the Hawley's strike, which is in its ninth day on Tuesday. In an urgent appearance in the plenary session of the Galician Parliament to address the current situation, Fejo said that denying this problem when the supermarket shelves are resisting is an insult to intelligence. So some strong words there from Mr. Núñez Fejo saying that the government is insulting our intelligence and asking for the army to be called in to guarantee the supply chain. So how did the Minister of Defence reply to Mr. Fejo's comments? Well, Minister Robles maintained that at this moment there is no need for the army to intervene in the transport strike. The Minister of Defence, Margarita Robles, said on Tuesday that at this moment it is not necessary to involve the army in the transport strike and advocated resolving the situation by seeking a point of balance between the parties. This is what the Minister of Defence said in an interview on television station Cuatro, reported by Europa Press, in which she also criticised the attitude of the Hauliers by showing behaviour that is no way acceptable due to the situation of shortages to which they are subjecting citizens and companies. So no need to bring in the army just yet, according to the Defence Minister, because obviously they think they have the situation under control. Now on a different note, various environmental groups in European supermarkets are trying to stop another environmental catastrophe here in Spain. And as we can see here, European supermarkets call on Premier Moreno to halt irrigation expansion in Doniana. Large European supermarket chains have asked the president of the Junta de Andalucía, Juan Mar Moreno, in a letter to stop the expansion of irrigation in Doniana and to abandon the plan to legalize cultivation areas in the area as it jeopardizes the prestige of the national park and compromises its future conservation. The letter has been signed by 23 European food companies and supermarkets, including Aldi, Edeca, Lidl, Migro, Sainsbury's and Tesco's, among others, according to WWF's coordinator for Doniana, Juan José Carmona. According to the environmental organization, the European food companies have expressed their concern to the Andalusian president about the proposal to promote a law that could endanger Doniana and compromise the reputation and long-term development of the whole region as an agricultural supply area. So time will tell if the letter from those 23 supermarkets will have an effect on Mr. Moreno's decision. And given the current state of that Doniana National Park, Let's hope that it does. Now, there's been some huge changes as far as COVID-19 is concerned here in Spain. As we can see from this headline, no tests, no quarantine. The health ministry to treat mild asymptomatic cases of COVID-19 as flu from next Monday. 
Public Health Commission has approved the new COVID-19 surveillance and control strategy, which removes quarantines for COVID-19 positives with mild or asymptomatic symptoms and will only diagnose people with severe symptoms. The measure will come into force on the 28th of March and is intended to take a further step towards eliminating the coronavirus influenza. The Health Ministry has decided to end the isolation of asymptomatic or mildly symptomatic coronavirus positive cases. Quarantines will only be mandatory for severe cases and vulnerable populations and it will be up to health personnel to decide whether to impose them on patients according to their level of risk. So there we go, COVID-19 to be treated like the flu here in Spain as of next Monday. Now let's have a look at a summary of the current health situation in Spain and we can see the accumulated incidence rate sitting at 436. Hospital pressure remains low at 3.8% and ICU pressure remains low at 6.1%. Now the perpetrators of a multi-million dollar housing scam here in Spain have been busted. And as we can see here, nice house for rent at a good price. Guadalajara puts an end to a multi-million dollar scam across Spain. Guadalajara has arrested seven men of Spanish and British national who allegedly swindled more than 2 million euros in 32 provinces throughout Spain. In addition, the agents are investigating 11 other individuals for the same offences. The detainees created fake profiles in a Spanish company in which they offered different services, among others a real estate portal. There, the victims were interested in renting properties at a lower price than usual, and in this way, the perpetrators requested the personal documentation of the interested parties, arguing that it was absolutely necessary for the rental. So good to see Spanish and British crooks working together, swindling more than 2 million euros out of unsuspecting victims. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. On here from Karina, hey Stu, try Little and Mercadona. They still have milk and flour and oil. Yeah, Karina, thanks for the comment and thanks for letting me know where I can buy those products. As people saw in yesterday's video, the supermarket that I went to didn't have milk, it didn't have flour, it didn't have sunflower oil, and a few other products were also missing. But from what I'm reading in the press, it seems to depend on where you are in Spain as to whether or not you can get your hands on these products. And if I remember correctly, Galicia, Asturias, Cantabria, and Andalusia are the worst hit autonomous communities. So I'll check out those two supermarkets that you mentioned and see if I can get my hands on some milk because my son absolutely loves a glass of chocolate milk when he comes home from school. One here from Sandy, cows have to be milked daily. There's no button to stop production. If milk doesn't get picked up, it has to be thrown away. Yes, yeah, Sandy, thanks for the comment and you're right. Cows have absolutely no idea there's a strike going on and they keep producing milk. In fact, that's been one of the biggest complaints from dairy farmers over the last 10 days or so that they're having to waste thousands and thousands of liters of milk. So let's hope for the sake of dairy farmers here in Spain who are obviously losing a lot of money at the moment that this strike comes to an end soon. One here from Gabriela. Hi Stuart, I can't find milk in Siguenza. The rain has fallen a lot in this part of Spain. I have been driving for 20 days and the weather hasn't been good at all. Well, I can still find sangria on the shelves. So I am good, lol. Muchas gracias. Yeah, Gabriela, thanks for the comment and thanks for letting us know that there is no milk on the shelves in that part of Spain, Guadalajara, either. But luckily, as you said, you can still get your hands on pre sangria for the time being. And when it comes to the weather, you're right, it has been a bit wet lately, but as we all know, we desperately need the rain here in Spain. One here from Rick, wow, I've never heard Danon pronounced that way. Is that Australian? It's not Canadian, American or British pronunciation, and it's not even close to the French where the company is based. Yeah, Rick, thanks for the comment and thanks for picking me up on the way that I pronounced that company yesterday. I used the Spanish pronunciation, Danone, and I think I also said Danone earlier in the video today. And the reason I used the Spanish pronunciation is because I had never heard that word pronounced another way until yesterday when I looked it up on the internet. I had never heard it pronounced in English, I had never heard it pronounced in French, I had only ever heard it pronounced in Spanish, Danone, but thanks to the internet, I've learned something new. One here from Wio Stu, why are you using canola oil in Spain? Surely it's got to be Spanish olive oil all the way. Yeah, Wio, thanks for the comment. And to be honest, I have never used canola oil here in Spain. I only went to a supermarket yesterday and showed that there was none on the shelves. Here at home, I only use Spanish olive oil for cooking, extra virgin olive oil if possible. But the reason those other types of oil are popular here, for example, canola and sunflower oil, is because people use them for deep frying, because apparently olive oil 
is not very good for that. One here from Raymond, it was interesting to see Stuart on Facebook, people are pointing out you were basically singing from the Vox hymn sheet about the strikes, ETC. I think your claim of political independence is being seen through. Yeah, Raymond, thanks for the comment, and to be honest, I had absolutely no idea people were discussing my political views on Facebook, and quite frankly, I don't give a damn. It's been something that's popped up quite often in the comment section on the videos over the last two years or so, my political persuasions. Some people have said that my ideas are in line with the far right, other people have said that my ideas are in line with the far left, but basically people have no idea. And at the end of the day, who cares? And finally, one here from Anne. My husband's new favorite beer is Alhambra, closely followed by Estrella Galicia. You can buy Alhambra in Tesco in the UK, which he's thrilled about. Yeah, and thanks for the comment, and thanks for adding to the conversation about which are the best beers here in Spain. And the two that you mentioned are definitely high up on my list also. Alhambra in the green bottle, one of my favorites, and 1906 Estrella Galicia, also high on my list. So two very good Spanish beers in my opinion, and good to see that your husband can get his hands on them in the UK. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the video out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.